All right, so we're going to start looking at radioactive decay, and I'm going to bring us all the way back to May 2020. So um, during the COVID-19 um, epidemic, uh, there was some scientists trying to figure out some things, um, especially how long COVID would last on different surfaces. They were going to use half-life um, to determine how long it would take the coronavirus to die outside of the body because viruses can't survive um, outside of the body. It slowly becomes inactive over time with, again, the exact amount depending on what type of surface it's on. Scientists were looking to start at um, cardboard. They wanted to know how long it took, and they noticed one half-life would be about four hours, meaning that in four hours, half of that amount of COVID-19 that hit that surface, the cardboard, became inactive. And after another four hours, another half became inactive and over and over and over again. So after 24 hours, over 98% of the virus would be inactive. So we're going to start looking at how we can use radioactive decay, those half-lives, to determine how old something is. So say I got, I brought in an orange and I left it on my desk at the start of the school year. I just, I left it on my desk just to leave it there. At the start, it's 100%. But we notice that it, it starts to decay by percents. So if I, if I want to half it down and figure out like the, how long it took, we're going to look, uh, we started with 100 and I cut it in half and I get 50. I cut that in half, I get 25. I cut 25 in half, I get 12.5. I cut that in half, I get 16, uh, 6.25. And guys, I can't really show you half a 6.25 because it's really too small to show you, but it is 3.125 and you can keep going. All right. How, how many months do you think it would take to get down to 50%? It's about three months, say, say three months. All right, so one arrow would be about three months. So three months to get 50%. How about two arrows? Well, two, so I need two of these, so three plus three is six. All right, three arrows. Well, three plus three plus three is nine. Okay, how about four? Well, I'm going to go an easier way. Instead of doing 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, I'm going to do 3 times 4 because it's my fourth half-life. I got 12. 5, 15. All right. Let's look at fractions. And this will make sense why we're doing fractions. All right. I'm going to start with 100%. That's one whole. And then I'm going to take it down by half. Take my half down by half. That's a fourth. Take my fourth down by a half. That's one eighth. Now it does get a little bit confusing. These ones you just divide by two. This one you times by however many arrows by three. This one, because I times by two here, I'm going to, and it's really weird because it's one half, I'm going to times each one by a half. That gets a little bit tricky. I can't really do it in my mind. But if I notice, I've got one over one, one over two, one over four, one over eight. Well, hold on, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, so this is probably 1 over 16, and then 16 times 2 is 1 over 32. That's one way you can figure out the fractions, and it does come in handy, because you may be asked about fractions. All right, let's look at a styrofoam cup. Again, we'll go down to 3.125, so that is 1, 2, 3, 4, Five half lives. We're in five half lives. How long do you think it takes a styrofoam cup to decay? It's about a thousand years. One thousand years. So remember, I'm going to take however many half lives it is and times it, multiply it by the original, the one half life. So one times two is two thousand years to get twenty five percent of a of just a styrofoam cup. It took a thousand years to get half that cup and another thousand years to get half of that cup and another thousand years or 3,000 years to get half of that. Four and 5,000 years. That's crazy. <coughs> Pardon me. All right. So looking at all that, that's great. But radioactive decay and rocks and living things and fossils, how does that compare? We're going to start looking at carbon-14. 
Carbon-14 is a slightly radioactive substance that has a half-life, according to our reference table, page 1, of 5.7 times 10 to the third years. Which, if we take that out of scientific notation and just go 1, 2, 3, we get 5,700 years. Well, carbon-14 is found in plants, you know, like the things I have in my window. And it is replenished every time in your body, every time you eat vegetables or you eat meat from animals that eat plants. And as soon as you die, not saying you're going to do anytime soon, but as soon as you die or anyone dies, the carbon-14 starts to decay. And it turns back into, again, according to reference table and the disintegration, it turns into uh, N14, which is nitrogen 14, which is a stable element. And at that point, when you die, you will have as much carbon-14 in you as you will ever have. You can no longer gain any more. You can get rid of it, or it can disintegrate. All right, so what I'm going to have you do right now is you're going to get out a piece of white paper, and we are going to manipulate and cut the white paper, so a piece of white paper and some scissors. What you're going to do is we're going to take a whole piece of paper. That is going to be our 100%. I'm going to take my whole piece of paper, and I'm going to cut it in half. I have cut it in half. I don't like this one. This is too dark. I'm going to cut it in half, and I will be left with one piece and another piece. On one of them, I want you to write down first half-life on there at the bottom. So what I did, carbon-14 on the bottom. Sorry, first half-life right there. All right? And then you're going to take this, and you're going to cut this into half. You're going to cut it in half again. So the one that you didn't write on, cut it in half. Voila. I've got one I'm going to write on, one I'm going to set aside. So the one I'm going to write on, again, carbon-14, two half-lives. Then I'm going to take that paper, that side paper, and I'm going to cut it in half. Voila. I cut it in half. I'm going to set one blank one to the side, and I'm going to write on the other one, carbon-14, three half-lives. And then I'm going to take that other, the one that I didn't write on, I'm going to take that, I'm going to cut it in half. I'm going to take one that is not written on, put it to the side. The other one, again, I always put down carbon-14, and I'm going to write four half-lives. I'm going to take that blank sheet, and I'm, again, going to cut it in half, put one half down. And the other half, I'm going to put down carbon-14 five half-lives, and I'm going to do it one more time, one more time. I'm going to take that last white piece. I'm going to cut it in half. I'm going to set the other side, that white one aside. I'm not going to deal with it anymore and know that I have um, six half-lives. You're going to run out of room, so just know that it's carbon-14 and you're at six half-lives. And so one of the things I'm going to do is knowing when I go through my first half-life, I am left with 50%. So I've got 50%, right? And at my second one, I'm at 25. So my second one, 25%. Third one, I'm at 12.5. Fourth one, 6.25. My fifth one, I'm at 3.125. You can always use your calculator to uh, divide and figure this out, but I'm doing a cheat, a cheat for you. My fourth one, we're at, this one's a little harder to see, 1.5625%, which is right there. All right, I'm going to go back to my first one, and I'm going to start putting in my years, because I already know the first one takes 5,700 years. And this is a half. So half, 50%, 57, one half life. This is what your should look like. Please make sure you pause and make it look the same. On my second one, so two times 5,700, I will be at one quarter, 
11,400 and two half-lives. Pause if you need. My third, I'm at one-eighth, 12.5%, 17,100 years, third half-life. My fourth one is, oops, right there, sorry, one-sixteenth, 6.25%, 22, eight years at four and a half. So all I'm doing is, I know this is my second, so two times five, three times 5,700, four times 5,700, five times 5,700, which is going to be, it's a little bit harder to see. So yours should look like that. 28, five years. And then my sixth one, it's going to be right there, 34, 2 years. And again, that's just multiplying. All right. Um, the thing about, uh, please set these aside. Um, make sure you hold on to them. Uh, if you need a paper clip, let me know. I will get one for you. Uh, you can keep these and use these on any um, worksheet, on any mastery check, any um, quiz, any test. I will allow you to use these. And uh, please, please, please do use these. They they come in very, very handy, and you'll see that in a little bit when we start to do some of the questions. All right, so what is so special about carbon-14? Why are we looking at carbon-14? Well, carbon-14 is used only for living things less than 50,000 years, and this is very, very important. The reason for it is because it's just it's too small. You can't keep breaking it down and be able to read how much carbon-14 is, once you hit like that 50,000 mark, you really can't read any more into it. And the next one we're going to look at, so we looked at carbon-14. Now the next one is potassium-40. That is also live, used on living things, which are older than 50,000 years old because its half-life is 1.3 billion. So that's the half-life at 5,700. You can only cut stuff down so much. Um, and 1.3 billion years, you have lots that you can cut to be able to read. One of the things you'll notice is I did color my top two green for living, bottom two brown for rocks. Because for rocks, we use either uranium-238 with a half-life of 4.5 times 9. Um, times 10 to the ninth or 4.5 billion or we use rubidium 87 with a half-life of 49 billion years all right got some questions that we can do together to help utilize the the reference table the front of the reference table and the light nice little clippings that we just did all right so what is the half-life for carbon 14 page one says 57,000 years according to our clippings 57,000 years or 5,700 years. Why do we not typically use it to date anything older than 50,000 years? Well, that's because it's just carbon-14 would be too small to accurately measure it. Say I find a dinosaur bone from a creature that lived 100 million years ago. I would want to use which radioactive element? So I'm going to look. Remember the top two are green, top two are living. Can't use the first one, got to use the second one, potassium-40. Say I want to date rocks. What radioactive elements could I use or should I use? Well, rocks are the bottom two. You want uranium-238 or rubidium-87. What radioactive element is closest to the age of Earth? If you forgot the age of Earth on page 8, um, at the left-hand bottom side, you will see the age, 4.6 billion years. Which one has it closest? That would be uranium-238 with 4.5 billion years as a half-life. Which one has the longest? That has to be rubidium-87 at 49 billion years. If I find a bone that has gone through two half-lives, two arrows, how old is that sample? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my two arrows. Then I'm going to start with 100, and then I'm going to cut in half to go to 50, cut in half go to 25. I've got two arrows again. I want to know how old it is. So 2 times um, 5, uh, 5,700. I've got 11,400 uh, years. How much C14 is left in that sample? That's why I did this. It's 25%. However, 
If I know I'm going through two half-lives and I have this sheet, two half-lives, there's the years, there's the percent. That's why it's a cheat. If I found human remains that contain 6.25% as much carbon-14 as a living person, how old was that person when they died? So because you can't use these on the reference, uh, on the regions, I want to tell you how to uh, calculate this. So if I've got 6.25, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with that at this end, and I'm going to work my way back to 100. So I've got 6.25. I'm going to multiply that by 2, and I get 12.5. Multiply that by 2, I get 25. Multiply that by 2, I get 50. Multiply that, I get 100. I'm going to put arrows in between the numbers so that I can find out how many half-lives there are. 1, 2, 3, 4. There are 4, so I'm going to have 4 times 5,700, 22, 8 years. All right, I'm going to use that same process, that same thought process to do the next one. But if you want to double check, Right there, 6.25, 22,800 years. If I had 400 grams of carbon-14 in an original sample, how much of that sample will be left after 22,800 years? Well, because I've already done that, I know there are four half-lives. So I'm going to put down four arrows, and I'm going to start with um, 400. So half of that is 200. Half of that is 100. Half of that is 50. Half of that is 25. I will have 25 grams of that original sample. If I had 200 grams of uranium-238, how much would be left after 9 billion years or 9 times 10 to the 9? Well, we already know that uranium-238 is 4.5. So I'm going to go 4.5 and up to 9. And I only have to do it once. I, I multiply 4.5 times 2, I get 9. There is one half, or those would be considered my half-lives. So I start at 200 grams. I go down to 100 grams. I go down again. I'm left with 50 grams. All right, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. This is the end of the notes. I'm sorry it took so long. Um, besides that, I hope you guys have a great day.